Hi, it's Mr. Anderson, and this is AP Physics Essentials, video 58. It's on motion of the center of mass. And one of my favorite toys when I was really young were weebles. And what you could do is you could push on it like this, and what they would do is they would wobble back. The saying went that weebles wobble, but they don't fall down. And so what's the physics behind that? Well, you have to understand what the center of mass is. If you look at a weeble, it's an egg shape, but the bottom has a huge amount of density. And so the center of mass, or this mean center of the object, is really, really low. If it was high, the center of mass, it would simply fall over. But when you would push on it, what you would do is you would take it out of equilibrium. You can see the center of mass would raise a little bit, and then it would just wobble back to where it was. Another fun thing to do with weebles was to throw them, or to spin them in the air, and they would do this kind of a looping action. And that's because they were revolving around that center of mass. And so when you're measuring linear motion, or change over time, what you really have to do with an object is find its center of mass. And that's going to be the mean position of the matter. So it's the average position of the matter. It's going to be right on the inside. And so if we really want to measure the linear motion of this object, let's put it in, in motion. What we can do is figure out where that center of mass was at the beginning, where it is at the end, and that would give us its displacement. Remember, if we divide that by time, it would give us its velocity. And if we give that over time, that's going to give us our acceleration. And so um, an example of this is if you've ever thrown a hammer, you get this weird kind of an action. So I'm going to throw this hammer across the screen and just watch it carefully. And you can see it's just kind of moving. It seems like a random motion across the screen. An axe would fall with a similar kind of a path. And so what's going on here? Well, if we figure out where the center of mass of the hammer is, since it's really heavy at the top, the center of mass is going to be closer towards the top. And what we're going to do now is let's eliminate the hammer. It's still there, but you can't see it as well. I've marked the center of gravity. And now I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to throw it across the screen and watch what happens. You can see that that center of mass, I've slowed it down a little bit, is right along that line. And so if we can figure out where the center of mass is, then we can accurately describe the motion of an object. And so if we had a bicycle like this, the center of mass of the bicycle itself might be right here. And so if we're solving a physics problem where we treat this bicycle as one object, it's important for us to know where that center mass is. Because there's going to be a lot of internal forces, maybe you're pushing on the on the road, you're pushing on the pedal, you're pulling back on the handlebar. But remember, since we're treating this as one object, these are all action-reaction pairs. And they're going to be balancing pairs as well. And so we can simply forget all those internal forces. If we know where the center of mass is, we can just measure the external forces acting on it. And then we can figure out the linear motion of an object. So how do you figure out the center of mass? Well, it's pretty easy. If we were to take an object like this that's uniform in density throughout, it would be right in the center of a sphere or a cube or a cylinder. Let's say we had two spheres. Where would the center of mass be? It's going to be right in the middle. So it's going to be right between the two. But let's say we have an irregular object. How do we figure out where the center of mass is if we don't have a formula to figure it out? Well, there's a hang test that works real well. So let's say we've got a piece of metal. It's cut like a, a house like this. What we could do is we could hang it like that. So we hang it vertically. And then we just draw a dotted line that shows us where verticality is. And so you could just drop a piece of string and, and then just kind of trace along there. We could then hang it from another position. We could do the same thing. And where those intersect, that's going to be our center of mass. So it's the center of that material, or the center of that product itself. And so if I want to measure linear motion of an object, what I could do is I could measure where's the center of mass to begin with. I could move it. So in this case, we're moving it for three seconds. Let's say it moved 12 meters. My velocity is going to be four meters per second, assuming that it's moving at the same rate that whole time. But now let's say we do it again, but it rotates. So let's say it's rotating about that center of mass. How do I figure out its velocity now? Same way. I'm going to take that 12 meters divided by 3 seconds. So it's going to be 4 meters per second. And so did you learn to use representations of the center of mass to measure linear motion? I hope so, and I hope that was helpful.